9. Batmobile In late 2020, Motorious, a supercar enthusiast website, reported on the alleged discovery of a Batmobile-like vehicle on the outskirts of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. While they were unable to confirm the abandoned car's location, they pointed out some equipment in the background of the photos that resembled ride seats from an amusement park, suggesting that the Batmobile was an old prop that was no longer needed. There's also a hearse parked near the vehicle, which seems like something Six Flags would use during its annual Fright Fest Halloween event. Some internet users said that the cars and the surrounding equipment were from the Chicago area Six Flags Park in Gurney, Illinois, but there was no way to verify the claims. Regardless of what it was used for, the Batmobile showed obvious signs of having been well taken care of throughout its lifetime. The paint job was in great condition, and the interior was remarkably clean, with no obviously broken components. The discovery came a year after another Batmobile was found in an overgrown forest at an unnamed location. Photos of the vehicle appeared on Reddit without a thorough explanation of the vehicle's origins or current whereabouts, leaving users to speculate about its backstory. Unlike the more recently discovered Batmobile, it appeared to be just the outer shell of a car, posing more questions than answers. 8. Caesarea Sunken Treasure Zvika Fire was only expecting to see some fish and perhaps the remnants of a shipwreck when he went scuba diving one morning in 2015 off the Israeli port town of Caesarea. But when something glimmered in the corner of his eye, he was compelled to investigate further. A storm had battered the coast the night before, and another was on the way. But as an experienced diver, Thea felt comfortable taking a few extra minutes to take a closer look at what he initially thought was a candy wrapper. And it's a good thing he did. When he picked up a gold coin with Arabic writing on both sides, Thea realized that the discovery was much more valuable than he originally thought. As he and his friends continued sifting through the sandy sea bottom, they found even more coins. They contacted the authorities, who sent archaeologists from the Israeli Antiquities Authority to the scene. At first, the experts were upset with Fair and his friends, and they even suspected the group of looting. But they explained that they were worried that the impending storm would wash the coins back out to sea, and even dove back in and helped the authorities find more of the ancient coins. The 24 karat gold coins, called dinars, were minted during the Islamic Fatimid dynasty between 996 and 1036 AD. They sat in the warm Mediterranean waters for about a thousand years before they were discovered and are now giving experts a fresh look at the history of the region, which has an obscure past when it comes to its size and wealth. Archaeologists are unsure as to how the coins became lost. They could have fallen into the sea from a ship on rough seas, at the hands of pirates, or for some other reason. 7. Henry VII's Bed During renovations at the Redland House Hotel in Chester, England several years ago, workers discarded an ornately carved oak bed frame in the parking lot. The four-post bed, which was being retired after spending 15 years in the hotel's honeymoon suite, captured the eye of an antiquities dealer who rescued it from the trash. In 2010, he sold it to an antique bed restorer and dealer, Ian Coulson, who noticed pretty quickly that the frame was older than the advertisement specified. Due to the nature of its embellishments, including a carving of Adam and Eve on the headboard, he suspected it was of royal origin. More specifically, Coulson had an inkling that it was the bridal bed of King Henry VII and Elizabeth of York the Tudor dynasty founders whose union ended the 30-year English Civil War. If his hunch proved correct, it would mean that the bed he paid £2,200 could be worth as much as £20 million, and it did. DNA testing of the oak revealed that the wood was harvested from a single tree of a variety found between southern France and Belarus. Paint flecks on the frame turned out to be a pigment called ultramarine, which was worth more than gold and would have only been used in royal furnishings. The bed is covered in carvings of Tudor dynasty symbols, including stars, shields, lions, and roses. Moreover, the oxidation of the wood proved that the frame was centuries old, not from the Victorian era as was previously thought. The rare piece of furniture, which dates back to the 15th century, 
is one of just two known surviving Tudor beds, with the other merely being a headboard fragment. All the others were destroyed by anti-royalists during the 17th century. 6. Pro Football Coach's Vintage Sweater In 2014, husband and wife Sean and Ricky McAvoy bought a West Point sweater at an Asheville, North Carolina Goodwill for 58 cents. After making the purchase, they noticed one very overlooked detail handwritten on the tag, the name Lombardi. As it turned out, former Green Bay Packers coach Vince Lombardi owned the sweater when he coached football at West Point between 1949 and 1953. The McAvoys, who sell vintage clothing online, bought the sweater simply because they liked it. Speaking with ESPN, Sean said, I picked it up and thought it was cool. At first, I thought it was a basketball warm-up. In fact, his wife was the first to notice the name written on the tag, and she had no idea who Vince Lombardi was. Sean's suspicions of the sweater's value were confirmed when he found vintage footage of Lombardi himself wearing it. The Pro Football Hall of Fame encouraged the couple to donate the sweater, but instead they sought the help of a professional auctioneer. It was put up for sale at a New York City auction, where an anonymous bidder placed the winning bid of $36,000 by telephone. What would you do if you found the Vince Lombardi sweater? Wear it, sell it, or donate it? Let us know in the comments and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. 5. Mayan Mural During home renovations in 2007, a family in Chajal, Guatemala, discovered an ancient Mayan mural beneath layers of paint in their kitchen. Homeowner Lucas Asicona Ramirez was chipping away at plaster when he noticed the centuries-old artwork. He eventually uncovered the entire multi-wall piece, which depicts human figures wearing a combination of Spanish and traditional Maya clothing. Some of the figures, who appear to be holding human hearts in their hands, may represent a so-called conquest dance, in the words of Boston University archaeologist William Saturno, who spoke with National Geographic about the discovery. A conquest dance is a special ceremony that's still performed today. It demonstrates the Spanish invasion of the region and the Maya's conversion to Christianity. It was the first time in centuries that the mural was exposed to air and light, and it quickly began to fade. In the meantime, experts scrambled to learn as much about it as they could. The artwork suggests that Ramirez's house was once the residence of an important person. Unfortunately, the home's history and past occupants are a mystery. 4. Legendary Manuscript Back in 1991, a Hollywood, California librarian named Barbara Tester was going through a trunk that had belonged to her grandfather. That's when she discovered an original 665-page draft of Mark Twain's classic Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. The handwritten manuscript contains the first half of the historic tale. The other half has been in the possession of the Buffalo and Erie County Public Library since the 1880s. Tester's grandfather, James Fraser Gluck, was one of the library's early benefactors. He'd requested the manuscript from Mark Twain himself, and the first half, which was shipped separately from the second half, somehow ended up in his attic trunk. Scholars and librarians, who'd been searching for the missing section for decades, suspected that Tester's grandfather may have forgotten he even had it. The story in the manuscript differs quite a bit from the final version that was released to the public, offering a never-before-seen look at the legendary author's first rendering of the Huckleberry Finn story. And in addition to its historic value, it's worth a lot of money. Tester originally planned to auction off the partial manuscript through Sotheby's, hoping to rake in at least $1.5 million. But the Buffalo Library sued and won, and now owns the entire manuscript. 3. Recovered Modern Masterpieces in recent years, several of Nigerian painter Ben Nwonwu's missing masterpieces have reappeared. Nwonwu created three versions of his famed 1974 portrait of an Ife princess named Ade Tutu Ade Miluyi, or Tutu for short, and all three vanished. In 2017, family in North London approached Giles Pepiat, the director of modern African art at Bonham's Auction House, and asked him to authenticate what they believed was an authentic tutu. Pepiat is used to people bringing him suspected originals that usually turn out to be worthless copies, so 
At first, he didn't hold his breath at the family's request. But he was pleasantly surprised to see that the painting was, in fact, the real deal. Speaking with The Guardian, Pepe had described it as the most significant discovery in contemporary African art in over 50 years. The masterpiece sold for $1.67 million, making it the most expensive Nigerian modernist painting ever sold at auction. Another Nwonwu painting, a 1971 portrait titled Christine, was rediscovered in 2019. The masterpiece was created for a man named Elvis Davis who commissioned his wife's portrait. It was subsequently handed down through generations of their family. The painting remained on the wall for many years but it eventually ended up in storage. When family members went through the storage years after Christine had passed away, they examined the signature on the portrait and googled N. Wonwu's name, only to realize that the painting was the handiwork of one of the most praised modern African artists. Christine fetched $1.4 million, nearly as much as Tutu and several times more than its pre-auction high estimate of $192,000 at Sotheby's London. 2. Roman Villa In 2016, homeowner Luke Irwin installed electrical cables outside his Wiltshire, England home so that his kids could play table tennis in an old barn on the property. In the process, he discovered remnants of what he suspected might be a historically significant structure. He alerted archaeologists, who spent eight days unearthing a well-preserved Roman villa that once belonged to a very wealthy family. It may be one of the largest structures of its kind found in the UK, according to experts, who spoke with the Belfast Telegraph shortly after the discovery. Artifacts found at the site, including oysters that were transported live from the coast in salt water, reflect the family's abundant wealth and luxurious lifestyle. The team also found coins, jewelry, animal bones, a Roman-era well, and a casket. They concluded that the villa was built sometime between 175 and 220 AD and compared it to the Chedworth Roman Villa, one of Great Britain's grandest structures from the time period. The site also contained evidence of pre-Roman occupation, as well as more recent but still very old artifacts, including 5th century pottery. Wooden structures within the villa suggest that at some point, a family lacking the resources to maintain the property chose to stay there anyway, relying on makeshift techniques to keep a roof over their head. It's very likely that the site had been continuously occupied for more than 2,000 years. 1. Ground Zero Ship In July 2010, archaeologists monitoring excavations at Ground Zero, the site of the World Trade Center tragedy in New York City on September 11, 2001, discovered a ship's hull buried 22 feet underground. They spent the next several years untangling the mystery of the hull and the ship it belonged to. Initial findings indicated that the hull dated back to the 18th century, and researchers theorized that it was deliberately sunk during the early 19th century as part of an effort to expand Manhattan's coastline with artificial terrain. Roughly one-third of modern-day Lower Manhattan was constructed this way, according to archaeologist Molly McDonald from the AKRF Environmental Engineering Company, who spoke with CNN shortly after the discovery. Prior to 1797, the location where the ship's hull was found was part of the Hudson River and was roughly half the size of the modern-day Ground Zero site. In 2014, scientists announced that they'd finally solved the mystery of the ship's hull, which sat buried for over two centuries before it was found. Experts from the Tree Ring Research Laboratory at Columbia University's Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory traced the wreckage back to colonial-era Philadelphia. An old-growth forest in the Philadelphia area supplied the white oak used in the ship's frame, a statement from the scientists explained adding that the trees were probably cut sometime around 1773, shortly before the American Revolution. Using a process called dendroprovenancing, the researchers analyzed tree rings from wood samples to determine the ship's origin. Samples of the vessel's wood matched up best with 18th-century trees in eastern Pennsylvania, in the greater Philadelphia area. The trees used for building the ship were also likely used for constructing Philadelphia's Independence Hall, where the Founding Fathers signed the Declaration of Independence in 1776. Thanks for watching! What's the coolest thing you've ever discovered by accident? Tell us about it in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe! See you next time, bye!